when I first moved here, there was a town hall meeting that I went to, and my parents took me, and Tim Raymer was the speaking on behalf of the Parks Department. It was down Pacific Town Hall. He asked me where I was from and everything. I told him Orlando, and I said, you know, I, I would surf, and my parents would talk about me to him about surfing and so on, and then he talked about skateboarding. You know, with my parents' permission, obviously, I put my name and put it down. I was the only one that did. Well, fast forward 20 years later, basically, that's how he got my number to call me and have the mayor call me as well. The old mayor, who was Kenyon, he said, uh, Kyle, we, I'd like to talk to you about uh, skate park. I, I kind of need your help. A former uh, elderman, uh, Mr. Ebenetter, put a banner, a Pepsi banner, alongside a splash pad banner down at Goodyear Park that said future home of skate park. Both of them almost at the same time and said, well, we need your help finding out how to build a skate park. And I said, well, how about I just do it? I used to just watch a lot when I lived in Florida. I was surfing more than anything else. My older brother was the one that was skateboarding. And my passion for skating didn't even start until I got to Wisconsin many years later. I started seeing people in Madison at Flying Fish and Undercover Skate Park up there in Appleton and Four Seasons. And it just took off from there. That's, that's when skating really happened for me, just being a product of being around skaters. For a long time, kids didn't have anywhere to go or do anything. We, like me and Kyle, when we grew up, we skated the streets. Man, I think I first started skating around 10, so it's been on and off about 17 years now. It was more about just meeting up with friends and hanging out with friends and stuff. The community back then didn't really appreciate skaters. They just saw us as hoodlums, saw us as damaging property and stuff like that, but I'm glad the community's kind of flourished and come to appreciate skaters a little bit more. And It's a lifestyle. I mean, it is kind of a sport now because people make money off of it, but when I was a kid, it was a lifestyle. But I remember when I was growing up, skateboarders had like a, like this dark cloud over them, you know, and like there were no skating signs all over the park and everywhere you went, but it didn't stop, it didn't stop anybody from doing it, you know, because like people love it. I started skating when I was like six, and I started skating because my big brother was really into it, and I was a lot like him. Before the skate the skate park was built, my brother bought like a little green rail so we could do stuff on there, and I learned like my first few tricks on that. Just seeing the skating community grow because like. When I was in school skating and starting out, there was literally only like a handful of kids in the whole school that skate. Now you come out here and I see kids of every age skating or riding scooters and stuff. I'm like, man, this is this is awesome. You can come and take your anger out here by skating. And you know, you can kind of, that used to be my outlet for anger was whenever I was upset, I would just go skate. Just forget about it, you know, get upset at the trick that I'm trying to land instead of what else is bothering me. And then I'll finally land the trick and it'll make me feel so much better. So in 2012, December, is when I made the official word and the official launch of the Portage Family Skateboard Project. And back then it was called the Portage Family Skateboard Project. We hit it like nobody's street crew could. I was already used to going out and sticking stickers and, and putting up pamphlets and taping them to, to signs and, and things like that. Now, you know, I had every walks of life that wanted to, to get involved. It started before I was on council. I can remember as I was coming in, one of the outgoing members made the comment to the new council that they felt that the skate park needed to get done and soon. So that was uh, April 14. The, the whole process actually started shortly before I became the mayor. And um, shortly after the election, um, Kyle approached me and I had never known Kyle. And we sat down and had a conversation about the possibility of building a skate park in Portage. 
knew as mayor that we had a number of young people that were back doing skateboards and they were doing places that really wasn't safe. If this would develop a safe haven for them, that'd be wonderful, it'd be a win-win. And also business owners to alleviate the problems they were having with skateboards. We're Grand Line Skate Parks, we're out of Seattle, Washington. We became a company in 2002, but we've been doing it longer than that. We've helped over 350 communities get skate parks. We, we really specialize in these grassroots projects. As I told Kyle, well, if you're going to involve the city, obviously regulatory issues become a much greater deal. And if you expect us to partner with you, a true partnership means that you bring money to the table as well. So we sat down with the city administrator and myself and had some discussions. Um, then brought in many other elected officials and other community leaders who were interested in this possibility. We developed an MOU that set forth what their, their financial responsibility would be, what the cities would be. Once they met their obligation, the city set their money aside. They were successful, they raised the funds, and we broke ground for phase one. When we went into this, it wasn't something that we said, this is where it's going. We had the public's input for many, many years, and we did our, our legwork to work with the community. And I think that's why this has been so successful. It's very accessible to get here. Um, it's close to downtown, it's close to our department. You know, there's a lot of place for parking, for people to enjoy it, and it's easy for us to get in and out of here. We are looking at an expansion to provide more safety and additions here, which include a security camera system. So currently there is some camera surveillance, but we are looking at a 24-hour live camera system that'll be around Goodyear Park and other areas within our community. This facility is a huge benefit to the community. Um, it's a free facility. It's a place for kids to come. Um, it doesn't matter what your financial means are. Um, everybody has the opportunity to come and use it. It's a, a growing sport. I think having a place to go, a place to hang out, a, a safe facility, that's what we're trying to do in all of our facilities, all of our parks. So I think Portage has a great park system. Um, you know, right in this facility, especially, we have a splash pad. Less than five miles away from a hospital facility less than five miles away from police department, fire department. It, it's, it's definitely one of the safest pocket parks that we have, I believe. project would be nothing without the fiscal sponsorship of the Kiwanis. Without them, we were not able to take in any kind of donations without having that fiscal sponsor, that 501c3. I've been working now with Kyle um, since he approached the Kiwanis group. During the meeting, they said, well, we need someone to be <clears throat> treasurer and I spoke up and said I would be the treasurer. And I still am the treasurer, so I've stuck with him the whole time. It was May of 16 that the Park and Rec Committee finally approved the $166,000 for the first phase of the skate park. That was the only phase that the city had any money in. Everything after that has been all donated money that Kyle Little and the Portage Family Skate Park group have, have raised on their own. It still had to come through City Council for agreements and understandings of what was going to happen, how things were going to be built, and make sure that all the uh, construction stuff was up to code. But that's not been a problem at all. With it. Uh, in 2015, Kyle reached out to the Skate Park Project at the time, known as the Tony Hawk Foundation, to start conversations about the skate park and portage. And he had a sense of kind of curious confidence. He wanted to learn as much as he could. And uh, that began a long email chain. Uh, now, you know, over the last, what, seven years, over 250 emails. In short, the Skate Park Project will take these applications from communities all over the country. And step one is to understand whether or not the project is a viable project. And step two, in order to understand where we direct this grant funding, we need to take a look at the communities data, the qualitative and quantitative data, hard data um, that we can surmise about these communities to make sure that not only is this money going to the right place, but the project, the money will be spent well in this place. He, he took the information that we provided and really ran with it and helped to help 
important to believe. We worked on help, helping him prepare for a grant application as, as the project got more serious. It was going to be possible, but he also knew it was going to be a challenge because uh, he needed to raise enough money to get the skate park built. And skate parks are not cheap. And he did the work internally to figure out what was going to be the right call. And he decided to go ahead and, and split it into phases. And we, we kind of sat back and like, okay, you know, if anybody's able to do this, it's Kyle. And he knew that it was going to be uh, a far longer investment in his time and a, and a larger commitment to get this done. But sure enough, he got phase one built, he got phase two built, and sure enough, they're on phase three now. And it was a long haul. You know, the, after the first one, the first one took us six years to get money. The second one didn't take us long because people could see the kids there and then they started donating. And the third one didn't take but just a couple of years. And now we're building it. Having the number of businesses, I mean, right now we have 26 locations still supporting us with phase three that have donation jar collection boxes. In one year, I remember them garnering over $10,000 in one year of just collections. There's a lot that goes into me saying this was community driven. Positively Portage is an acronym, I guess, for the Portage Area Community Charitable Trust. Our aim is to promote good things happening in Portage, and the skateboard park is one of them. Individuals who give donations to the skateboard park can use it as a tax deduction. We're a 501c3, and because the skateboard park is sponsored by us. They, they do have that. They've been able to get some really substantial grants from other organizations that, uh, that, that require a tax exemption. And, that, and that's been key to the building the, the skateboard park. Edward and June Lenz, they established this charitable trust as part of their state plan that was set up to provide uh, support for the youth, elderly, education. They were residents of Portage and Partyville, uh, teachers, business owners. We were uh, approached multiple times by the skate park for different matching grants is what we ended up doing and it was easy for us as a board to see the support of the community. Well Dave and I have lived in Portage, we're both born in Portage, well over 50 years ago you can imagine. Went to schools here, we moved back after working out of state for a little bit and this is our community and we just love to see it grow and thrive and be a happy, wonderful place to live. And I, that happens in communities when you support projects that are going on, especially projects that are good for kids and things like parks and uh, recreation. That those are things that we like to support. He's always taken 50% and went ahead and barreled ahead with getting the other 50%. It never slowed him down at all. Every day, every other customer, I don't know a person in the town that wasn't for this, even if they didn't have kids. You know, they, were, they knew it was something that the kids needed. The socializing between, you know, the families, the kids being able to play, getting their exercise, being out in the sun. like there's been a lot of um, like we, we go backwards where we're like not outside active anymore we're inside we're on our devices it feels good to see that that people are getting outside and getting fresh air and to like know that I had a little bit of a play in that so I'm really excited to see where it's gonna be like in 10 years it's cool to see that it's finally coming to fruition so I'm just excited about the expansion and, and what the future holds for it it's been you know, it's amazing how different groups have come up and stepped to the plate and assisted him. Construction firms, financial advisors, you name it. Uh, Kalanis helped out for a period. He's just uh, pretty much always found a partner to help him along the way. And we were just the ones that were able to maybe incentivize it a little bit. Being here at the store, we used to be open seven days a week and there was no way I could help. But I would buy the brats, I'd donate the brats, the buns, the ketchup, mustard, all that stuff, and then all the money went to the skate park. That was my donation. I 
I've seen so many firsts at that park. So many accomplishments from just standing on the board to riding to kick turn to kick flip to you name it. We live in a great era of social media. So it allows me to see the skate park almost live in use almost every day. Seeing the uh, first time ollie or the first time kick turn or the I got on my board and I, I rode a little bit, that's amazing. And I'm able to be a part of those memories. Because I have seen numerous times older kids trying to teach kids how to like drop in or like just how to do kick flips. And every year they usually have like a skate school here where they'll have, there was one year I was help teaching and uh, my buddy Andrew, he was doing like more of the advanced class and I was just kind of helping do beginner class and teaching kids how to run the board, balance on it, how to push it right down a hill. Well, I did it the first year that we started, um, that the phase one was in, so we finally had a place where we could teach kids how to skate, and we got a whole bunch of equipment donated to us, which was awesome. So every kid had uh, skate safety gear, you know, elbow pads, wrist guards, helmets, you know. And yeah, we had about, I don't know, six kids each class. So they got to get out on the park and get to learn how to push. And uh, my main thing was kick turns and just trying to teach them a little bit about how to ollie. My overall goal at the end of each class was just to get them to be able to drop into the park and ride. And so that's, yeah, and when they did that with confidence, that's the most awesome thing. It's good, like, activity to do by yourself. It's good to do with friends or in community, make new friends. And there's no, like, limitations to it. You can make up new tricks. There's no boundary or limitation on, like, what you can learn or do with your skateboard. I just like to hang out with, like, my, like, my best friend, Sean, because we're both really good at it. And I actually met him at the skate park. I still remember the time when me and my friend, Sean, learned the, like, the second biggest rail, like, back to back. And it was just like a happy time because we did it right after each other. They're all out here making memories and learning how to do new things, and that's really what skate parks are about. It was built that way. It was built to be a training ground. It was built to have everything that you've ever wanted in a skate park as a family, family skate park. What's nice about the skate park is, you know, technology is great, but the kids are on their phones and computers, all that. Mm -hmm. maybe a little too much and uh, this gets them out do some physical exercise and uh, everybody needs that. It's really satisfying to look back what you did and just see the kids enjoy themselves. Oh the first time that first section was built and I, I drive by it twice a day. I live on the north side of town and it was just it brought tears to my eyes that kids were there there's little kids and big kids and they were all sharing it. And it was just a little one section, you know, and the only thing that they would say negative about it, that it wasn't big enough. And I said, well, we're gonna be building more of it, but we just have to raise more money. Honestly, we have never been on these roads going home or downtown where we have not seen kids at the skate park, unless it's dark at night. So it's pretty amazing to have these kids learn through program and skate park etiquette and respect down at a park uh, that could be locally accessed to not just the community of Portage, but Columbia County, the state. The kids that come and help when they have to shovel or sweep or pick up the trash, that meant a lot to me, just seeing that. And as a business, you know, we tried to donate a meal to them or something, you know, just saying thanks. As the mayor, um, I always challenge folks with new projects is we understand you want to build something. What's your long-term plan to make sure it stays in, in good condition? So we've seen that so far here. I'm sure the city's doing a good job with that. And I know that Kyle and his group is staying very driven in that regard too. I've seen Kyle down here himself cleaning this up and also, so good for him. I think it shows that the park does have a pretty bright future as long as you know, the kids and the people using the park treat it with respect and you know, keep cleaning it up and stuff. I, I do feel as long as the park's being used and 
the community sees that there's still a bunch of kids here using it, I'm sure they're gonna keep maintaining it and make sure it's a nice park for time to come, so. A lot of the parents that I see that do go down there have really stepped up in a way. I'm, I'm happy to see a lot of the role models that are down there are, are setting a good example. You know, look at other skate park names in the area or in, in regionally. I didn't see any other park named Family Skate Park. And I think that's an indication of Kyle's vision of where he wants this to be, so. That's what this park was really about, was a way to bring families into it, give kids a safe place to skate, where they're not breaking rules and being a nuisance to small businesses and things like that. And they can come out here and skate, learn, and you know, hopefully achieve great things. That's what we really want. Um, and I have a lot of friends that live in this area that have kids that skateboard. So it's cool for me to see that there's this, this community place where they can all go to and feel safe doing what they love. Being a healthy community, I think this helps quite a bit. I think it helps when the parents actually get out there and do some of this stuff with their kids, you know, because it shows that the community is involved. When you get kids out here playing, there is naturally some communication between groups, so to speak. Um, and there is somewhat of a, a good camaraderie with the parents because a lot of the parents see the same people over time and they tend to develop that friendship. As a paramedic, I know what closed head injuries can do. And I realize that um, that could be a challenge to enforce that. But I would implore kids, adults, parents, grandparents to make sure that if your child um, or yourself are down here skateboarding, wear that helmet, wear those arm pads. It only takes one significant fall to change your life forever. So enjoy the sport, but do it smartly, do it safely, and enjoy your time at the skate park. We've had, you know, medical emergencies, so that's why we recommend that you are wearing the helmets and protective gear to uh, minimize those risks. They do monitor themselves pretty well. They want to make it sustainable for future generations. So there's that balance there where you got, you have something that is great, you have to take care of it, you got to appreciate it, and you have to monitor your own actions, plus keep your eyes open of other things that are going on and address them. I think it's a compliment to, to Portage. And people go by here and see kids using it all the time. I think that it, it, generate support from the community. People know that their donations are being used for something that is an asset to the community. Anything that supports the community is, is a good thing. Yeah, sometimes like if a kid is struggling, I'll help them. I just usually tell people to have fun and try their best, but that's really it. We want to provide a safe, fun location for kids and sometimes that means we have to be a little more involved or you know to that fact so we do support it and uh, we look to have it here for a long time. Portage is a prime example of how to do it from A to Z. All the tools have always been there. Just the local identity that we incorporated into the skate park so obviously there's a curling theme in phase one where we have the rock and the target. The funnest part is getting to skate it. In the skate park building and skate DIY culture, it's like there's a lot of people helping people, you know. Concrete days are my favorite days because it's exciting. Um, traveling, uh, working, skating, the homies. It's the journey, the journey just keeps going, you know? in history is because we have the number one and number two building design companies that have worked on our park. The local high school there, or elementary school maybe it was, um, was being torn down and that was a real important part 
of that neighborhood. So there's actually uh, pieces from the facade of the building that are incorporated into the backs of the of the skate park in phase one. Another element that we incorporated into that is that uh, a lot of the kids would skate the stairs or just in general portage. That was the skate spot was over at the school. And so one of the sets of stairs in the skateboard park is actually a replica of those stairs. You have red uh, mark from Dreamland Skate Parks. You have monk those guys from Grindline Skate Parks. And to have those two and those two companies be involved with this has solidified this park in probably the top 20 in the world. We're putting the top plate in and I hadn't done that before and that was fun and just learning how to cut all the radiuses and forms and stuff. I'm really excited to skate this pool because I love pool coping and I love that there's not like a flat wall it's all round and people can expect like good crunchy grinds on the pool block and lots of fun sessions. Like I think it's going to be a very good addition to the park. The goal is phase three is to bring a tourism park to get dock, you know, that quite frequently holds different uh, competitions up in Cascade, to get Red Bull with the right seating and bleacher seating and so on, they're going to stay and play all weekend. I think it's exciting for the community because it's going to bring in more events, bring more people into town that may not have ever thought of coming to Portage before, and they can always discover something else new in Portage. So, you know, this is the, the door opening. We've had several people come from other communities that we've met that have, like, written to Kyle through Facebook and different things and different experiences, and they think our our skate park is great. It's not huge, but it is quality. Well, in the past, they have had like smaller skate competitions here from like local skate shops from around the area coming together, doing giveaways, having like their shop sponsored skaters come in, and you know whoever locals want to come in and do the contest. Like they had a best trick contest. Um, they had a game of skate. They had um, like a jam session. What started off as a little neighborhood skate park has now, with phase three, make it a semi-regional skate park that people will come from all over that portion of Wisconsin to skate. And as it's grown, it reaches out to more and more people and serves a bigger need than just the immediate portage area. It brings people into our communities, eat at our restaurants, stop at our gas stations, you know, have lunch, dinner. I think this facility does draw people to our community, um, which I, I think everybody from council to park board um, to government officials is really excited and proud of. The work never stops, but for something that I can see physically and I can see the community taken care of, it's quite special to see it come into fruition. One of the best people I've ever met in my life is Kyle Little. He's, he's super genuine and it was a pleasure working on phase two with Grindline and Kyle. Kyle has been amazing. Yeah, he's and been the he's leader. A tremendous fundraiser, yeah. and uh, he just pushes it forward all the time. I just think it's a reflection of Kyle's passion and enthusiasm for the park. He's at every event, the fundraising event. Uh, he's just 100% dedicated to it, and I think his passion is what is enabling people to continue to contribute to that park. Looked that challenge in the face and decided to go for it anyway. And, and we weren't too worried about it because we knew that Kyle is this kind of next level advocate. He got a lot of gumption, a lot of confidence, and a ton of tenacity. It, it was nice to see, you know, that after all these years, Kyle had, you know, he did what he said he was going to do. They got a head start. They really do. They have something that we never realized was even possible to have in our backyard. These kids out here are our future. Like, they need this. Um, we need to support them. We need to support the community. Just just keep it real. Like, if you're going to do it, do it because you want to do it. Keep your passion. Keep it real. Like, skateboarding can take you a lot of directions. You know, the kids need a place to go. No matter what it is, they need some place to go for the summer, to hang out, 
and have a safe place to go. We're having fun building it and we're gonna have fun skating it. And we hope they do too. Honored to be a part of it, you know? And uh, stoked for the kids to be riding on something new and keeping them out of trouble. Yeah, it's got a good community out here. It's a great feeling to see the next generation and, and what they're going to do with it because I, I see it firsthand what I've already seen some of them grow up in the park.